those things that you really suck at. So you keep on brushing it under the rug until that pressure comes. You have to do it. Doing these wrap ups is one of those things. I am not very good at making those oral reviews as compared to my writing. I can actually write a book about the book that I read <laughs> when it comes to written reviews. And that is why doing monthly wrap ups is a must in this channel. It's a way to grow my skills and overall make myself love doing this because you no know, practice makes perfect. That being said, let's do the June wrap up. Hi guys, my name is Omero Michelle. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. And the first book that I managed to finish in the month of June was The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. This is a renowned book from time immemorial until now. And I'm glad that I went to, into it blind because the first half of this book was boring. It was boring. And even though it was boring, I kept on going. I read the book in two sittings. And in the second sitting, it was quite interesting because I wanted to know where is this narrator going with this book. The first one was started with the our young narrator just rambling, rambling here and there about things. I was like, okay, I, 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 is this story going to converge and tell us something solid? So second sitting, I was quite intrigued to see where this book is going. And then I realized that this book is about mental health. And I was like, okay, now I understand why the first half of the book was a bit going this way, that way, and a bit banal. <laughs> but that being said, I get the impacts that this author wanted to do with the book. And he kind of somehow reminded me of The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, another book that I really loved. I loved the writing style. Woo! Woo! And it has... Not exactly the same delivery as this book, but that one was a bit interesting and lyrical. And also, Ned Vizini's, it's kind of a funny story. You can see that the narrator is a bit confused, also trying to juggle and filter what is going through him. But in the end, you get to see that this person took charge of his mental health or her mental health and really tackled this. Was it impactful or yes? Would I recommend this book only with a grain of salt? If you really are patient and love reading mental health books, pick it up. Pick it up. Second book that I finished in the book uh, in the month of May. In the book of May. Damn! The month of May was The Master Key System by Charles F. Hannell. It is divided into 24 chapters and each chapter tells you something in depth about your mind and its power. At the end of that chapter, there's an exercise that you need to do. And this is the book that really got me into meditation. It came at a time when, 2013, at a time when I was going through a very, very tough time in my life. And doing the exercise, those meditation exercise and mindfulness exercise that really got me through this phase, I was quite proficient and I mastered. I don't know if you can master meditation, but I was really, really good. I would just sit down and within a minute, my thoughts are stilled. I am very calm. You know, like an athlete who stops working out his muscles and then it atrophies. That was me with meditation. So my aim of rereading this book and practicing these lessons is for me to get back into that habit of meditation. I'm still doing it. I'm still a bit struggling. And, you know, when it comes to actually implementing the things that you are learning from a book, it's a habit. So it will take a bit of time and I'm really patient with myself and kind with myself. And those moments when I do manage to steal my mind for a few minutes, I get out of the meditation feeling so focused and so calm and so relaxed that and nothing can disturb my peace of mind. So hopefully at the end of the year, we'll have reached a point where I'm better than the way I started this year. I started this book in January, 24 weeks. So I managed to finish it in June. If you are somebody who loves things about the mind and how to sharpen it, I will highly recommend that you pick up this book and I think it was this book that led me to the secret or was it the secret that led me to this book either way they are connected and I find things about the mind quite fascinating and uplifting especially if you implement this Let's see. next book is a reread that I usually have every year and I made it an intention that this year I will read it again when the year ends because it makes you like question so many things about the society and all those rules, beliefs that have been there before us that you just grew up accepting without questioning it. 
and it's a book that makes you actually sit down and think for yourself does this feel right is this thought correct is this path that people are recommending or people have been going on the right path for me and that book possessions with god by Neil, Neil, Neil Donald Walsh. This is another book that I discovered thanks to The Secret. And I'm so glad that I jumped on it. Some people think it's blasphemous because questioning God and some of his beliefs is quite things that are not advocated as a Christian. But when I read this book, some things really make sense because some things we have been taught as Christians just didn't resonate with me. So when I picked up this book, it has helped me expound my belief system and actually debunk some of the things that I've come to believe. If you have an open mind, if you want to see if, you know, see what society and Christianity as a whole and other people's beliefs has affected you in a way, read this book, read it with an open mind, with an open mind. What's the worst that can happen? If it doesn't resonate with you, put the book down, debunk or, you know, filter out what you read from the book and move on with your life. Otherwise, it might transform your the life. The next book is a favorite, favorite of mine. It's the first book I ever read in verse. It was also another reread. Aside, this year I made it a point to reread some of the, my favorite books that I've read as a reader. And it has been just been so rewarding because every time you read something, you get something that you never saw during your first reading of the book. And this time the book is Clap When You Land. This book is heavy, it's about grief, but Elizabeth Azevedo really delivered this story gently and in a beautiful way. It follows two characters, Yahaira and Camino, who are connected together by a man who kept them apart with lies and, you know, deception, illusions. And throughout the book, these two characters come to terms with their father's death. And they try to filter out and try to find ways to heal from this sudden loss in their life. In the process, they find out that they have other relatives out there that they never knew about. And this shifts so many things in their life. Make They realize that a solid, constant person in their life wasn't exactly truthful to who they were. And in the process, while they're spewing their feelings and their thoughts about what has happened into their life you get to see this man behind these two characters as in this ghost comes to life he is not present in the book but the way these two people talk about him they conjure him up vividly and you get to see what this man is and their impact in their life i also finished this book and i was like okay this book is also an ode to women because at the end of the book they stand up for each other and fight against some of the neg negative effects of the patriarchy system overall as a poet because i'm a, I am a poet please do not tell me to, <laughs> to perform no no i'm a written poet at the end of the book i'm like wow it was lyrical. It was beautiful. I was like, can you see this alliteration? Can you see this rhyme? Can you see the way she has used imagery? You know, have you seen how the way she used inanimate things to conjure up vivid and deep feelings? I was like, wow. The second time it was more beautiful and I read it in two sittings. The first time I think I read it in three sittings. I think the third time I will finish it in one sitting. That's how fast the book reads itself. Despite it being heavy, it will not weigh you down you know it's a book of healing it's a book of hope as much as it's a book of betrayal loss family love i would highly recommend it the next book is from africa this year i had the goal of reading more books from africa no pressure because i find myself struggling uh reading african literature because most of them are heavy they're full of trauma full of violence i'm not saying that they're not soft books out there but Africana are usually heavy in every sense of the word. And I can understand, understand why we have been through so much. So our stories will kind of reflect what we have been through. And this book is Painting a Mirage by Samantha Rubidzai Vazure. This is a book full of trauma. It is set in Zimbabwe and also the UK. The narrator, Ruva, comes from Zimbabwe. And from there, she details life in this family that is full of <laughs> she details 
this dysfunctional life in a deep, intimate way. Uh, when you start the book, you will be a bit confused because so many characters are introduced in the book in the typical African fashion way, you know. The aunt of my aunt, the uncle of my uncle, cousin to my mother's side, you know, this kind of way. But when you're patient enough, you will get to see now the family tree coming into life vividly. And also the story is not told in a chron chronological order, so you will need to also be patient. The first few chapters, you will feel like this narrator, is, is she really reliable? Because she's still young. She's still wearing rose-colored glasses, so not everything she sees is the way it actually is. And it's only later in life that she realizes that truly our family was lack of a better word and though it's dysfunctional you get to see the character now come to the fact that she needs to heal from this family and all those things that they made her grow through she gets down to trying to debunk all these things that she has learned from the family you get to see us also grow as a character because as the book goes along she also grows with the story i especially love the middle or the third quarter of the book because she gets more intimate about herself you get to see her being very active and conscious about healing and you also get to see her reconcile with the mom and the fact that she grew up in this family doesn't mean she has to you know accept all those things that this family put them through and in the process, you get to learn so much about Zimbabwe and their culture. I was like, okay, I can see the similarities between some of the things they do as Zimbabweans to Kenyans. And that felt like home. I think that's why I do enjoy African literature, because it feels like home. As much as I would love to have, you know, a more positive, light kind of literature, you know, to make me smile. Because not, it's not all doom and gloom. But that being said, in the end, you get to see her stand up to her relatives and some of the traditions that us as Africans were made to, you know, make a way of life. And they don't make sense. They don't make sense. But overall, I did enjoy this book. If warned for triggers such as violence, rape, abuse, emotional, physical. So don't tell, don't say I didn't warn you. Don't say that. So... <laughs> So the next book is from Kenya. We are home. We are home. And that book was Lucky Girl. Overall, I really enjoyed reading this book. And I made a reading vlog of this debut novel by Irene Mushemi Deritu. You can check it out in the cards I've attached on your left top screen. But this book follows Soila, who is a privileged girl from Kenya and has an overprotective mother. Who is Christian, and you can hear you can, from from that you can see the heavy commentary on religion, and how it can have a negative impact on someone as it cages some parts of you. So Ella decides to fly away from the nest because she needs to explore life. Her mom doesn't want her to go to slumber parties, doesn't want her to go to cinemas. She just wants her to sit at home, read, read the Bible, and you know be a good Christian girl. But Soila feels like the world is how you her. Oh, yes, sir. So she de decides to go to the U.S. to study as a way to open up her world. When she goes there, she feel, she doesn't necessarily feel the impact of racism and prejudice because she's been sheltered. She has never experienced these things. These things also happen in Kenyans, you know. Fellow Kenyan discriminates against me because of my skin color, you know, such a kind of things she didn't experience. So when she goes there and meets other black people from Africa, other african-american people she is indoctrined into this fact that there's prejudice among the black people and finally she says okay i can see it but it's only later on that she realizes that this thing is so heavy and it impacts people so much that it can affect the way the path of their life turns out i felt some part of this story the author was just throwing there you know because this book was part of was started out as her thesis she was like just throwing facts without making it impactful to me because i also wanted to learn through soila what it means to be racially discriminated but overall she did a awesome job by highlighting some of those things 
I loved the love interest, the second love interest. The first love interest felt like he was just there. He was not present. His character wasn't really pronounced. But when the second character, love interest, came into the scene, I was like, this man actually reminded me of Jeanette's husband. For those who are in the poetry sphere, you know who Jeanette is, but I will add a picture of them and the husband. Every time he came into a scene, I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> and there's something mature and loving about this man. And through him, you can see how he overcame all these prejudices. He still does face them. He still does have this fear about being stopped by a police. He tells the story. You can actually feel this fear and all this thing. And there's something about also the author's writing style that I really enjoyed. There's something about Africans writer style, most of them. So she also falls into that category. I did enjoy the writing style. The pacing was just right. Uh, the narration, I felt like it could have been more intimate given that it was told in the first person narration. But I have no quarrels with this author of this book. I enjoyed it. If I was to rate it, I would give it four stars. So that's only my opinion. If you want to experience the book for yourself, go buy the book and read it. Uh, the next book is also from home. This is The Pain and the Secrets. I talked about this book in depth in the mid-year freakout tag. If you want to go check out my thoughts about it overall i was actually impressed by this book i really love this cover the first edition cover was i'm not a fan of that but that being said i felt like this author delivered this story beautifully as our character was growing also uh the nation was also growing and as the character was going through her own turmoils also the nation was going through her own turmoils so you could see the correlation between this character and our country and i found it so beautiful if you're not a fan of history, the way the author delivered these historical facts was so easy and effortlessly that it will not make you deter from reading the book. Our character goes through a number of things. Again, this book is full of trauma. If you're triggered by content such as rape, violence, then you might go in knowing that you might find this in this book or just simply experience it through me. But overall, I did enjoy this book. The author made deep political commentary on Kenya and they are so freaking true. I was like, shit, <laughs> this is an expose on our political scene, but it's such a deep, deep and beautiful book. Uh, our, our, our main character also in the later on in the book develops cancer. And I think this is the first book I've ever read where a character battles cancer and it goes to show the rigorous things that these people face and also the author did an awesome job to highlight what cancer is the treatment some of the challenges that our healthcare system face when it comes to cancer and i found that really quite profound overall i enjoyed it i honestly enjoyed it and with that ending i felt like oh there could be a second book from this they could be because so many things were left untied and it ended in a very high octane cliffhanger. So I'm can't wait for book two. Yes, there will be book two and we are here for it. The next section is segmented for fantasy because I've realized now more than ever, I love reading fantasy. And this was the book of the month for my fantasy club for June. And that book was City of Brass. I think I love this book, not because I loved A Master of Jean, but it kind of reminds me a bit of A Master of Jean. There was that element of mystery. There was also tons of adventure. I loved the adventure. And uh, there's a bit of commentary on religion. And it's not solely focused on religion, but it also focused on this human nature that, you know, good versus evil and how you treat others. There's slavery, something I'm come to realize that it's common in most fantastical books. And I love our main character, Nari. Nari is a person who has been raised in poverty. Actually, she raised herself from her memory. She has only been on her own. So she has devised ways to survive in Cairo. The book is set in Cairo, that area, Egypt. And I think also why, again, it reminds me of a master of Jean. 
and it was adventurous. It has different elements. The magic system is not exactly complex, but it's not exactly simple, but it will not deter you from the journey of enjoying this read. The writing style, the way it was done, it made the story flow. I do not have any quarrel with this book because I loved it. I was like, oh, I need to know more. It had a diverse number of characters. Some were cut and sufferable, like Ali Yazid. I'm like, oh. I used to love those scenes when Dara used to torment him because it will rail him up and they will fight. I do not like this element of love triangles in my books. No, I don't like that confusion. I'm like, can you stick to just one person? I know sometimes life happens, but then again, I don't want that in my books. And this was present in there. That being said, I loved it. I loved this. I loved it. And I can't wait for book two. That's what I will say about this book because me describing fantasy books is like me explaining to you rocket science social software. The next book. The next book is the tight suckers. Finally, finally, funny. Finally, I've read the night freaking suckers and I loved it. And I freaking loved it. I loved number one the writing style. You know me and a book with an awesome writing style, poetical, sweet, you know. Authors who use inanimate things to conjure up people and scenes have my heart, and this is one of those books. The magic system. I cannot say it wasn't well pronounced. <laughs> it was there, but it wasn't well explained. I think that was the element of mystery that made you want to read more and more. And this book follows two characters who are pitted against each other from when they were little. They don't know the rules of the game, but they know they have to conjure up awesome, amazing thing in this circus. We also don't know what we also don't know what is happening, as well as our main characters. So we follow this night circus. It appears anywhere without prior knowledge and when you go into this circus it's quite enchanting i was like wow to experience this circus i want to go in and see all these magical things and the way the author described it made it so vivid you felt like you were in there experiencing all these illusions you know was this contortionist is this contortionist who i really would love love to see her doing her thing real life and i can see why people love this book so much i had an amazing time honestly i had an amazing time it's just that the ending was a bit underwhelming for me i think i went in expecting a happy ever after i'm a hopeless romantic what okay i'd rather i'm a hopeful romantic let me change the narrative i never expected so much more but i loved the commentary they were making about you know, telling stories and the way they told the stories about these characters was just beautiful. Overall, it was an awesome experience. I kept on, I read it so fast. I read it faster than I, I had expected reading this book. And I'm so happy that I picked it up. Finally, finally we found the love of our life. I would love to read it actually. I will, next year next year and the last book that i read in june that i managed to finish was one door away from heaven by dean Coots. if you don't know i'm a dean Coots fan i think the thing about him is i love his writing style it's poetical lyrical sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming because this is thriller and you're busy re there reading I was feeling like I was flying in the air. I want it to be my back full. So sometimes I can be quite impatient with the writing style. But overall, I love the writing style. I love our comment, his commentary on the power of the mind. When you read in between the lines, you will see that he usually talks about the power of the mind. And it's also in this book. This book felt like an ode to dogs. If you've read this book and finished, you know why I'm saying that. And you, from that, you can... I understand that this man loves dogs. Yes, he loves dogs. And I also think that that is something about the book that I really loved. I love books with dogs that survive till the end. Because I am a dog owner and lover. And I loved that. This story 
follows quite a number of characters. At first, it felt like they're all disconnected, but as the story went along, you could see now how the story converged and it made things more exciting and sizzling. But it's the fact that that part was like 400 pages in. This book is about 600 approximately. And it was it took so long for these people to converge, but I felt like he had to build each person's character so that you can see why this person is the way he is. And I was very, very, very patient with them. And I loved Leilani. Leilani is one is our main character. She is quadriplegic. And I wanted to read something with positive quadriplegic representation. And it was done in this book. The quotes you could see really rooting for these people. There's commentary about, you know, bioethics. Some of these people are like, we need to kill off these people who are old, who are sick, who are quadriplegic, because it will make room for people who are healthy and normal to thrive more. I was like, there are seriously people like that out there? I was, I, I've been mad. And our villain in this book is quite, you just end up hating him in a way that <laughs> I don't think you will ever felt in your life. And I could feel... Dean Kut's compassion about these people who feel like they are a burden to the society. And I was like, I feel you. And I'm also rooting for them because they also deserve a chance to live. Who says you are the God to decide this person dies and this person lives? Who? So I loved, I loved this book. I, lo <laughs> I wish you would see me finishing off the book. I was like, <laughs> I was supposed to finish it at the end of the month. This book are quite big. My door stoppers, I intend on reading about seven. So the way for me to tackle this book is to divide it by the number of days in the month. So in a day, I will read 20 pages. But it reached a point I could not read only 20 pages. I just kept on reading because I needed to see what will happen next. And there was also an element that I will not expose to you for those who want to read this book because it will be a spoiler. But overall, I loved, loved this book and I love the commentary that it was making on us as humans, good versus evil. Overall, I had an amazing reading month in June. I didn't know I would read... Sorry, my camera is shaking. I didn't know that I would read 10 freaking books, 10 heavy, amazing books. And I'm grateful that I have these books to read. But overall, can I pick a favorite? Obviously, Clap When you Land is a favorite. Obviously, Conversation with Read is a favorite. Obviously, I enjoyed, actually, I enjoyed my, all my reads in June. And I'm so happy that this, you know, love for reading has been rekindled. And I hope it will continue this on. I would love to know what your favorite book from june was if you read something if not it's okay no pressure maybe you're going through a slump or maybe you're not a fan of reading but i hope this video has encouraged you to read something no pressure just pleasure if you're new to this channel you love more content from me i do content on journaling i do add a bit of my craft if you love poetry if you love craziness the unusual then this is the channel for you do hit the subscribe button Turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified when I upload new videos. And also give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Or if you have enjoyed me. <laughs> that being said, I hope you're reading more books to give you pleasure to take off the pressure of life. And until my next video, people who... Alright, ding 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 ding